In this video, I'm going to go over how to analyze Boston housing data. So first thing first, we import pandas and um, we can import numpy. I'm going to import these like before. And then from pandas, we import series and data frame. We're going to first, let's call this Boston housing data is equal to PD dot csv read first we're going to read our data set and my data is in a folder called data so like I'm going to go over boston h dot csv so we first um, define our data frame let's do some quick things with this Again, understanding of the data so we have 14 columns and we have 506 we don't see any missing value most of these are integer or float all of them and um, let's look at the shape of the data so we can say bht shape and we see that we have again oh uh, sorry we have 15 columns so first one's uh, index if you want to look at the description of the data so we have crime per capita, we have proportion of residential land zone, industries in town, proximity to Charles River, and other information like age, index ratio, lower status of population, median value of owner occupied homes. Okay, so let's go back to this data set. We're gonna first in the start with running describe, get an understanding of um, how this data looks like and um, we can look at the mean standard variation minimum and a maximum for instance for age we have property starting from 2.9 all the way to 100 probably they cap at 100 the radius also is a number that's turning from 1 to 24 so we might want to look at that and the median value which starts from 5 all to 50. Okay, so once we have some strand understanding of this data, we can work with different elements. So let's say I want to know, for instance, what are the values that are in CHAS column? We said we can run a, a value count in order to see the unique values in this so i'm going to say that dot value count so let's look at some of the values are in this so we have zero or one and most places in this data set are not close to charles river i'm assuming so that's what we're dealing with so let's look at some other additional information for instance, we can look at the first few rows of our data using Boston Housing Head. So let's look at how data looks like. So we have these values. So this is the index, crime, we have zoning information, industry, all the way to medium values. Okay. Let's, for instance, um, look at, we were looking at um, value counts so we can do some group by let's say I'm going to do Boston dot group by and then I'm gonna add this and then I want the mean value across each category so essentially what this does it will go and get the mean of every other column based on being close or not close to Charles River. We're just looking at the crime. We see that the crime is most likely higher, and I'm assuming the median values are going to be higher for whatever that's close to the river. That makes sense, right? We have tax information, age information, properties a little older. Those are near the river. And... Um, other information that you see here okay um, let's say if I wanted to know the size so I'm gonna re write this again and I'm gonna write the size of each category this is going to be equal to 
the value counts that we had. So essentially, give us the size of each category. If I were was interested to now group by based on multiple variables, I can just run this again. Let's just run this. I let's say I'm interested to see the age of the properties based on the radius and proximity to Charles River. We put them. Uh, pass them as an argument and instead of looking at everything I just want to compare the age okay so let's run this getting an error uh, let's look at this um, I have to separate these properly so now I see that based on the radius changing from 1 to 8 and then 24 and being close or not close to Charles River now we have an average of the age of let's say properties okay so if i'm comparing them for whatever that's in radius one those that were not close to charles river uh, their mean was 46 for age and for the other ones it was 24 okay so we can do go ahead and run different things uh, based on uh, group by we can always check the correlation so let me just look at correlations I'm assuming we're not going to get any error because all of our data is um, all of our data is um, in numerical format so I'm looking at the correlation between all the values let's look at the correlations if I'm checking the correlations we can see what is positively or negatively correlated with each other if you were interested to see let's say only one of these values you can specify that value you can always specify let's say I'm getting the correlation and I want to look at correlation of only one of the columns and as I showed you before we can sort that out right so we can sort that column so let's just do one I'm gonna check the crime one so I'm gonna say B core and I am looking to look at the crime information crime so this is it and if you wanted to like sort these values we can add a sort value function to this so now we have these values sorted so crime and radius so like proximity I guess to highways let me look at the definition of that index of accessibility to radial highways have the highest uh, correlation with each other and also that has crime and medium value of the houses have are negatively correlated so kind of makes sense and we said if you wanted this in a descending order you can just say ascending is equal to false so we have those sorted out now let's try to provide a little bit of visualization here I'm gonna import Seaborn as SNS I'm gonna import matplotlib dot pyplot as PLT and then you can always pass an argument that says matplotlib inline which will help make sure that your figures are nicely located inside your Jupyter notebook okay so let's visualize the visualize the chas data so if I want to do this so I can say sns.countplot data sns.countplot and we're going to pass our data and then we're going to define our x variable as proximity to the Charles River so we can see the count for this if we wanted to add labels we can say x label um, plt.x label and we can add let's say this is uh, the number number of houses next to Charles River let's assume that's the data we're dealing with I'm gonna do PLT Y label and we pass total count and we can also do the title so I'm gonna say the title for this is proximity to Charles River so once we run it we see those values in here and um, we can look at let's say other values let's look at the distribution of median 
uh, value of the home so we have this let's do value counts so we see the values for these so we see that there is um, a lot of information here most values are not repeated but it seems that property values or the median values were maxed out at 50 so anything that was over 50 is kind of maxed out so let's plus plot this data so i can say give me sns his plot and i'm gonna pass bhd um you said median values let's look at these values in case we had some missing information we actually don't have any missing information in this one but if we wanted to get rid of missing information in our plot what we do is that we run the plot and we can just add drop an a here so if i had some information it would have been dropped so i'm going to pass it let me check the parentheses so our data comes and then we see that again this is in this case not going to change much but um, we could have got rid of those missing values. For instance, in the California housing data, we had some. And we can add the labels for these. So we see that the distribution plot for median values and median value of owner occupied homes in 1000, which I just copy pasted from the metadata. If I wanted to, let's say, plot two variables in this, let's say, um, let me just add some information from my notes. So imagine we are interested to look at uh, data being over x and y we can use a cat plot for instance let's just run an example i can say give me a cat plot and data is equal to boston housing and i'm gonna pass x as proximity to charles river and for y variable i'm gonna use the median value so this will help us compare some of these um, information what else we can pass we can also pass kind i'm going to say give me a bar kind and we can also specify the confidence interval in this bar has to be passed as a string and um, we said confidence interval so i'm going to say show me the confidence intervals of 95 let's try to do this i'm getting some error is looks like um now I have to use a new format for this, so I'm going to replace it. So error bar, confidence interval, and 95%. So now we see that we have information about the houses based on the proximity to the river and the median value being higher, obviously, for those that are by the river. And um, we can run a couple of examples of regression. Let's just start with the regression plot. We said we can run regression using a reg plot, so I'm going to use a regression plot. And I'm going to pass my data and I'm going to say give me age and plot it based on age over medium value of the homes. So this, I don't need to close it. I'm going to close it here. And um, again, if we wanted to change the color, we can do that. So I can say color is equal to, um, let's say red. I'm just going to pass that let's try to do this so we see that the plot is going to be drawn and a line the regression line is going to be drawn in this so based on this data it looks like it looks like that as the age increases the median value of the homes are going down that kind of makes sense if we wanted to for instance add uh, additional information um, for title and x and y we can add those as well so we can make this a little bit more informative um, again i copy pasted this from metadata so we can assume that again there's a maybe a slight negative relationship between these two variables now if i wanted to move forward to running uh, the regression again we can use in this example stats model so what we do is that import it. So I'm going to import a stats model API. And um, OK, so if you want to continue 
to do some regression analysis here what we do is that first we import stats model api once we do that we can let's try to do a regression based on tax and medium value so i'm going to define my x i'm going to say that's boston housing data set tax column and then we can do we add a constant that's um, always by default we pass x and then we need to define our dependent variable i'm gonna say this is um, median value of the homes so i'm gonna say median value and then we run our model i'm going to define my model let's just call it model let's say model is equal to sm dot ols we're running ols regression we pass dependent and independent variable and we fit the regression line and once we do that we can print our results we can use model dot summary here and we get the output so our dependent variable was medium value of the homes r square is about 22 percent and uh, if we look at the results we see that our p-value is about zero that means our hypothesis is confirmed which shows that tax could define the medium value of the homes to some extent right there's a positive relationship between tax and medium value of the homes if we want to for instance let's check the same relationship but between let's say the number of rooms in the house in the dwelling let me move this down if i wanted to run this between the number of rooms and medium value of the homes we run our model again i can call this model 2 and then we run the results and let's look at model 2 we have to run this and then we run this okay so if we change our independent variable we see that we have now better r square so the number of rooms is uh, we can say it's a better determinant and it's significant and uh, this is the coefficient so we're expecting that coefficient to be higher than what we had in the first model the coefficient in the tax model was negative so there was surprisingly a very small but negative relationship but here we have positive relationship between number of rooms and the medium value of the homes.